Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. And I'm Marcus Petruska. Today we're going to talk about the origins of the shuffle. I brought Marcus in. Marcus has been here all day. He's a live sound mixer. He works on very big movies and TV shows. And he's also one of my favorite drummers. And we were talking about this. He came over to visit today and I said, oh, we need to do a video together about this exact topic. Yeah, so when we were talking about um, you know the shuffle and everything in the top 20 drum uh, video that Rick put out, I noticed that Jack Jones was just really, had this really sweet, cool, laid back, really awesome shuffle, the Jeff Percaro shuffle. And it got me thinking about, like, like you said in the video, how difficult that particular beat is to pull off, because there's like really three things happening there. Um, which led us to like the origin of like what is a shuffle? It's it's this right? One, a two, a three, a four. Mm -hmm. So where did that come from? Well, it came from the sound of trains actually leaving the deep south, going to Chicago and other points north. You know the only true American art form, jazz. It's the foundation really yeah. of that. The drum from the drumming perspective. So yeah, you have the sound of the train going across the track, right? So that's that's what a shuffle is. And then you have variations of that. You know you have different speeds and how it feels, you know, it's, it's important how, you can't just go, bum, 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 bum. people do it, <laughs> but uh, it's really important to have that feel, you know, so like on the Rosanna beat, like I think Jeff is putting like great, you know, like the one E, a two E, a, he's putting the trips in the left hand in between the, so you got the, uh, 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 right, so I'll put that on a different surface so you can hear it better, right. That's the Bo Diddley part. Right. So the Bo Diddley's on the kick drum. You gotta, he doesn't play it on every Explain single beat. Explain that, Marcus, so about the Bo Diddley beat. So there's, a, it's like a dotted quarter eighth, dun, 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 and then followed by two eighth notes. It's almost like a three-two son clave. Like, yeah. Bum, 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 right? I added the Bo Diddley figure. It's a shuffle Bo Diddley figure. <laughs> Putting them together, this is what it came up with. So with that in the kick, and then the shuffle, and then the back beat, you know, the fat back two and four, you... So part and parcel to having a good shuffle is the opposite of this. All right, so you have to have kind of a, not, not exactly loosey-goosey, um, but, but it has to have a certain looseness to it. Certain looseness to it, a humanity to it that lets it breathe. Like you can't really, you can't really program a shuffle on a drum machine. No, I mean people have done it, but you can hear the difference. You can't yeah. really program. I mean, it's almost impossible to program any swing feel at all. Right. Absolutely. At, for any instrument, I mean, not not even just a drum shuffle, but for an, any type of swing feel. Right. And your uh, your instrument your um, your videos about quantizing and um, especially at the bottom video, and you you were talking about that. And I think you actually quantized in a triplet form, and just like it's just like so sterile and so. The first and foremost thing that a shuffle will tell you about a drummer is, you know, the level of his, I guess, humanity compared to that machine, you know, and the relaxation of it all. And it really, the personality, you know, will come through. If you listen to like Vinny. Or those guys, it's all very, I mean, they have the total package of technical proficiency and also technique when they want it to be loose and relaxed and to really just kind of, you know, be a ninja with the sticks. It's really, it's really, you know, something to behold. Let's talk more about the origins though. Talk about yeah. the Civil War and, and how drumming evolved, at least with the, the, you know, snare drumming, for example. Yeah, so we were talking about the debt we all owe to the, to the Civil War drummers. Um, you know, there's a, a guy named Stone who wrote a book called Stick Control. I think it was in the early 1900s. And basically he took a lot of, like this Three Camps tune, it's just triplets, right? And it's the doubling of the eighth note triplets inside of that. So drumming, really, the origin, like the oldest company in America is Zildjian, right? They were incorporated in 1623 in Istanbul. Yeah. Um, and so, like any drum and, you know, cymbals, it was, uh, and also bugles, military signaling, right? So you got, you're in the fog of war, you got the muskets going off. 
um, you can't really hear anything. You certainly can't hear your you know commander yelling stuff. Right. So he tells the drummer, hey, signal this, signal that. And there's all types of different you know beats for that. And so those you know beats are really the foundation of um, of modern drumming. And then when you add in the train and the shuffle and the art form that um, that jazz is, um, and you put all of that together, and then time goes by, you get the modern rock drumming or any type of drumming. We were talking about how if you listen to the early rock records like the Chuck Berry yes. and those kind of guys, the drummers on a lot of those tracks are playing swing. Yes. Because that's what existed. Rock was this, like, nobody well, played. Well, that's all that there was when they were growing up. Right. I mean, they, you know, they like... the big band music. If you think of all the early rock drummers, if you, yeah. even, even the rock drummers from the 60s, Ringo, oh, Keith yeah. Moon... They all had that swing feel Absolutely. to their drumming because right. that's the way that they, the people that they grew up and emulated, that's how they played. I remember when I went to college, the Buddy Rich tribute series had just come out. Right. And so it was the first time I ever saw Vinny. And it was really cool to, to be able to see that and like the, the one handed Tom and, and kick drum stuff. And Let's talk a little bit about the beginnings of, of rudiments and why they are important to practice. So rudiments like the alphabet, there's 26 standard American rudiments, right? And they're all groups of one, two, and three. And then there's, there's an extended series now. There's stuff like Shirley Murphy's and Pataflaflas and stuff like that. But the original ones, the first 10 or so are just rolls. So you get the single stroke roll, you know, you get the double. And then I think threes, I don't even know if threes are one of them. But they should be if they're not. Um, but then you have the strokes, you know? You have the five stroke roll. That's very common. Right? Yep. But the, the Civil War drummers were really into seven strokes, right? Which is basically a triplet, triple up one with all that doubled. So we were talking earlier about this, and basically, you know, you got guys marching around, guys all back then in the 1860s. Right? And let's say you're trying to get your army from point A to point B. The best way to keep them in time is to have you know, your drums and your fives play you know, a little cadence. Dun, 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 dun. That's like 120, right? Bum, 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 right. Bum. So that's like the Sousa stuff. Yeah. Right? So you got guys that are marching like this for hours on end. You know? And so you have the drummers like playing you know, or whatever that they're playing. So when they make it a triplet, gave them a chance to come. Relax for Relax a for a quick tenth of a second. Yeah. You know? And then like the flamicue is a way to get back on the beat. So you got... <laughs> you know? And so you, now you're back. Now technically, you shouldn't lose or gain time in any of those rudiments. And then you have you know, your different strokes. You have... Which is a sextuplet all doubled. So then, then you have the, the long roll, right? Which is just forever. And you, you should play them, you know, open to close to open fingers on the sticks, don't let them fly around like this. Every rudiment of the 26 should be played slow to fast. So, like a double stroke roll, you know, you should get that faster. And the way to practice this is to set your um, metronome to where you can talk like I'm doing now, yeah. and not have to think about it, and then go a little bit faster. Now make sure the you know, strokes are even. Try talking some more, and if you can, I go a little bit faster. Again, listening to make sure the strokes are even, and then go a little bit faster, right? In the same way that the 26 letters of the alphabet are responsible for all the great works of literature, so the 26 rudiments well, in English. In English, that's true. Yeah, what does Chinese have like 500? <laughs> Uh, I'll ask the kids. They, yeah. They study Chinese, so. Okay, Marcus, let's go over to the studio and have you demonstrate a few shuffles. Sounds great. So this first one is just a classic mid-tempo shuffle. Here's a quick Texas shuffle characterized by four on the floor, four on the hi-hat, and then a pulsating left hand. This next one is the classic Bernard Purdy Shuffle. The 
This next one is the classic John Bonham Fool in the Rain. If you take the Bernard Purdy shuffle and the Fool in the Rain and you add the Bo Diddley, uh, 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 then you get the Rosanna, like Jack played. With variations on the left hand. For example, in the first verse, there's, I think, one ghost note, and by the third verse, there's all the ghost notes. So shuffles are infinitely variable. Changes in the ride, the hi-hat, the kick, and the snare. As long as you have this basic train going over the track sound, you can change the tempo or the accents. You can make it half time, you make it double time. The sky's the limit. It's your own personal taste, interpretations, experience, all come together to serve whatever song it is that you're playing at the time. Um, and without the shuffle, none of what we know as modern drumming today would exist in the form that we know it as. That's the origin of the shuffle and the importance of it. That's all for now. I'd like to thank Marcus for being my guest today. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, guys. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.